Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Good day, saints. My name is Neliswa Shona Chigudu, and welcome to Devotion Time. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you, dear Lord, for this beautiful, blessed time that you have blessed us with to come and to share your word and teach each other, reminding each other of your love. Thank you, dear Lord, that you are merciful unto us sinners and you never strike us according to what we deserve. Lord, I pray, Father God, as we are about to hear your word right now, be with me, speak to me, speak through me. I pray for your viewers at home that your Holy Spirit may interpret the message according to what you want them to hear. In Jesus Christ's mighty name, I pray. Amen. Today's devotion is going to be based on a series of devotions uh, which are going to be under the story of the woman with the issue of blood. And the title for the title for this particular devotion is called The Power of a Rumor. The Power of a Rumor. We shall read in Matthew 9 from verses 20 up until verse 21. And it says, And behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood 12 years came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. 21. For she said within herself, If I may touch his garment, I shall be whole. 22. But Jesus turned, but Jesus turned him about, and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. And the woman was made whole from that hour. Saints, there is so much power in the words that we say with our mouths. The words that we say to each other, the words that we say about each other, even in the absence of the person. The woman that we are reading about today, she is said to have had, it looks like she had a uterine disorder because she, she was bleeding nonstop for 12 years. It says that she had done everything in her powers. She had gone to all doctors. Even her resources were now depleted. But nothing could help her until the day she heard. She heard about Jesus. Now, Proverbs 18 verse 21 tells us that the tongue can bring death or life. Those who love to talk will reap the consequences. This woman who had suffered for years received her healing through what she had. Through what she had, her hopes were revived. Now, I'd like to think, I wonder if the chief initiator of, um, of those news about Jesus, the chief initiator of the room, if she was there, or he was there during the time the woman was coming to touch the hem of Jesus' garment. I'm thinking, maybe to them, they did not even relate that what they, had, what they said and what is happening right now with this woman was related. Maybe to them, it was just some woman who just decided to come and touch the hem of Jesus' garment. And the next thing now, the miracle has happened for her. Little did they know that because of what they spread around um, about Jesus, today, that person was being healed because of them. I remember a time I attended um, a lecture by um, Sister Pretty. She was at Vista Clinic. It was a motivational lecture. 
she told us about the um, being unique in what you do. The lecture was so motivational that by the time I came out there, I came out embracing my uniqueness. I remember she made an example about the cars which are moving out of the street, how they are all different in designs. And sometimes you sit and you think, but this person, how did they even think of designing this particular one and even have the guts to go to their manager and say, this is what I have in mind. We should um, get this going out there and someone is going to drive it. But because they had embraced their uniqueness and they are confident in themselves, they can achieve anything that they want. After I had that lecture, I came out there embracing that, you know what? You don't need to be like anyone else. It's okay to be unique. You don't need to follow the trend. If you feel like you want the wall um, of your house to be red this side, blue that side, green that side, and white that side, it's okay. That's how you like it. Embrace it because it's beautiful. God has um, created you to be like that. But I am thinking, this was five years ago. Sis Pretty, where she is, she does not know that I am still quoting her. Where she is, she does not, I don't think she even phantoms that she made that kind of impact in my life. I can't even imagine about other people. But because of what she said, and I heard it, it changed my life. And I remember she mentioned how God had given her the gift of, of, of talking. And she talks too much, you could see even with the way she portrayed her speech. And she was saying, you can see, I talk too much. Imagine if with the, with the way I'm talking, I was going around spreading negative words. What would that be? God has given us the power to speak, but not just speak anyhow in anything, words which kill other people, but words which heal other people. Today we are reading about a woman which was um, relieved from her sickness, a 12-year-old sickness, because of what she had. Now, when we read in Matthew 27, verse 12, we find another story there where um, when Jesus was in his tomb and when he was resurrected, it says, uh, I'd like to read for you Matthew 27, verse 12. It says, when the chief priests had met with the elders and devised a plan, they gave the soldiers a large sum of money, telling them, you are to say. His disciples came during the night and stole him away while, he, while we were asleep. If this report gets to the governor, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. So the soldiers took the money and did as they were instructed. And this story has been widely circulated amongst the Jews to this very day. Since this very day, someone may miss heaven because of what those soldiers spread around, spreading a very bad rumor, a lie about what actually happened. Could it be that you are also a, spread, a spreader of good news. You are sp also a spreader of rumors. And what kind of rumors do you spread? Are they rumors which are good, which can revive someone from a sick bed? Or are they rumors which can actually kill a person? Because remember, when you assassinate someone's character, you are actually killing that person. Killing a person is not just taking a knife and, and, and slitting the throat of someone. Killing starts from even the words that we say. Could it be that someone out there is not confident to stand up and speak in front of people, to stand up and say their views, to get that promotion at work because of what you once said to him or her, or because of what you once said about him, or about her and it got to their ears. And then again, 
Could it be that you have a good testimony that someone needs to, to hear out there and get healed, but because of whatever reason, you are holding back and you are not using that gift of speaking. You are not giving out that message that God has given you to testify about him, to say good things which will give hope to another person. Today, we are reading about a woman which God relieved from a 12-year-old sickness simply because of what she had. In 1 Peter 1, verse 15, it says, But as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Verse 16 says, Because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. Our Father, our God in heaven, is calling us to be holy. He is calling us to be like him. And one of the ways is by the testimony of our mouths. It is my prayer that God can help us, can sanctify our mouths, can help us that the words that we say with our mouths, they can revive a sick person. They can revive a 12-year-old sickness of someone out there. It is my prayer that the words that we speak about each other, they be good words that when a person hears, they don't crumble and want to cocoon in their skin and never have confidence to go out there and live the purpose-filled life that God has given them. Let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, Lord, we are weak in flesh, dear Lord. Sometimes we sin even without knowing. Lord, these things, they sometimes happen without even thinking about them. And we end up saying the wrong things which do not glorify you. But Lord, it is my prayer this day that you can be with each and every one of us. Anoint our tongues. Hold back our tongues every time they are about to say something wrong which will not glorify you. It is my prayer that you may fill us up with your Holy Spirit and bless us, Father God, that we may be a blessing unto other children out there. This is my prayer in Jesus Christ's mighty name. Amen.